Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to be joining Major General Suzanne Votrino, United States Air Force, via VTC. Major General Suzanne Votrino is the Commander, 24th Air Force, Commander Air Force's Cyber, and Commander Air Force Network Operations at Lackland Air Force Base, Texas. General Votrino is responsible for the Air Force's component numbered Air Force, providing combatant commanders with trained and ready cyber forces which plan and conduct cyberspace operations. 24th Air Force personnel extend, maintain, and defend the Air Force portion of the Department of Defense Global Network. General Votrino directs the activities of three operational cyber wings, two headquartered at Lackland and one at Robbins Air Force Base, as well as the 624th Operations Center at Lackland. General Votrino, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Tiffany, thanks for that great introduction, and thank you to the foundation. I really, truly, I'm sorry I can't be with you today, especially when I heard about the great breakfast that you were uh, all sharing. Obviously, a decreasing budget uh, environment makes the, uh, the pace of travel just a little bit slower. Fortunately, uh, I can use the speed of cyber to share my thoughts today. So that's 880,000 mock for anybody that wasn't tracking on that. And I am really pleased to be able to share some thoughts. I wanted to say, first of all, that to have Congressman Meehan there and to have Homeland Security and cybersecurity on the same committee and in the discussion about our future means that we've moved forward as a nation, all the way from government to industry to our international partners who are represented there today and the best academic minds in the nation. So thank you for joining me and more importantly, letting me Skype in to have this conversation. There's been a history of innovation, so if you'll bring up that evolution of technology slide for me. This is so you can look at something besides me on the uh, video screen. The technology landscape moved kind of at an ever-increasing pace, and it opened up opportunities. Those can be leveraged for good, and frankly, they can be leveraged for ill by our adversaries. We've come from computers like that uh, IBM 650, and no, that's not me sitting there. That might be Elliot at the other console. My first computer, though, was a Burroughs. We used to call him Billy Burroughs. It involved punch cards and syntax errors, and I made a lot of syntax errors. And the only thing worse than finding an error on the card was putting them back into the order when you dropped them on the floor. So maybe our cyber journey started at similar places. Innovation changed the way we access information, the way we connect with family and friends, and frankly, how we conduct business. And that includes that space business that's reflected at the bottom. We have devices we can put in our pockets, buy plane tickets, transfer money, send emails, and video chat with family. We've got face deals, facial recognition marketing, an application that scans your face and then as you walk around a store, checks your location and offers you customized deals or automates the way you check out. It's changed everything about the way we interface in this world. Now, there was going to be a video that showed next, and for those that are in the audience that actually represent this to me, it was going to be uh, one of the uh, scenes out of uh, The Big Bang Theory. And don't tell me you don't watch it. Some of you are actually starring in it. But he calls the cops because he's been violated at home. Everything's been stolen. His gold, his attributes, it became personal. He called the cops because somebody hacked his World of Warcraft. It was personal. That's his wow factor. What's yours? What's your wow factor? What makes it personal for you? And I recognize that we've got folks every single day that are making that difference. And so what makes it personal is those things that we do leverage through the network systems. 
and depend on. In the space community, we've got hackers talking satellites, we've got innovation changing the way we access, and frankly, we're defending against attacks every day. In those applications, they're, they're absolutely crucial to delivering data, and whether that's meant to make sure that we can do the innovations and do the hard work, or whether that means we're gonna move forward, that means every second counts. So in those new capabilities, in that countdown that you're watching, for all those capabilities that you can say, in that same 60 seconds that you're gonna get 165,000 emails or a few million in terms of your Facebook attachments or the 650,000 that might update your Facebook right in the next moment, or might Google Votrino or Cyber, or frankly, the Space Symposium on any of the devices that we have. In that same 60 seconds that you have all of that capability and that our mission systems have that capability, your adversaries have a capability to burrow inside and take advantage for nefarious means. That contested domain is what changed everything about the way the military got involved and the Department of Defense views this mission set. So in the space community, you've got hackers targeting U.S. satellites. You're aware of the number of financial institutions. All of those because every 60 seconds, nearly 250 computers are hacked by various malicious software. Now 250 doesn't sound like a whole lot, but each one of those computers is attached to another couple hundred, which is attached to another couple hundred. This is a viral interface, and so for everything that one person sucks down, the rest of you all get to eat that garbage. And that's the way we look at operating the net in the United States Air Force. So what's your wow? Is it when hackers targeted government satellites? Is it when adversaries went after our financial networks and frankly some of the retailers? Or is it your business base? Because this is your corporate advantage. This is the nation's economic power. And for me, and everyone in this uniform, it's time to roll up our sleeves because this is our national security. Next slide. Every day, we're talking one million victims of cyber attack. This is approaching a $500 billion industry in terms of the financial gain that can be made by adversaries that are simply criminals. Or maybe it's industrial espionage. And then in some cases, it's nation states. Or better yet, nation states involved with hacktivists and hackers and criminals creating a group of folks, kind of the unholy alliance. These figures are from the 2011 Norton Cyber Crime Report, and that's interviews across 24 different countries. This is a worldwide epidemic. And General Alexander remarked in the uh, Enterprise Institute last year that, in his opinion, it was the greatest transfer of wealth in history. And I think Symantec placed the cost of IP theft to the United States companies at about $250 billion a year. And that $388 billion is when you factor in the downtime and watch our future disappear in front of us. If you're not watching comparisons, the money lost in annually in cybercrime is bigger than the entire illicit drug trade. And enemies in cyberspace includes those hacktivists, the cyber criminals. So who are your friends? Who do you want to build trust with? Next slide. Because that's what it's all about. 
industry, dev uh, industry develops trust relationships because that drives the bottom line. If customers can't trust a corporation to protect their data, or frankly, can't get to your websites, they're not going to do business with you. In the Air Force, we're in the trust business too. Our members and the nation rely on us to ensure the domain's available for friendly use, at the same time making it hard for uh, the bad guys to get into our systems, to exploit that same domain. So everything in our business relies on cyber, and that's from the movement of troops that you see in that C-17 picture to space operations for United Launch. You might want to render that next picture. Next slide. There we go. There's all of you guys. Oh, one back. See, now I'm watching you. Uh, so if you look at that uh, United Launch Alliance, the Delta IV, you've got a national security payload there. And as uh, General Shelton has said before, we've got to get our handle on this. Because everything that we rely on is about cyber. There's a foundational responsive and a dependency that starts at the very beginning when you architect the systems, when you enable people to interact, and as, as an alternative for communication, like you're seeing right here today. Next slide. So we're defending against attacks in the United States and they're occurring every day. So what are we going to do differently? What's going to happen is if you look up at those, uh, the assuring the mission pieces, that means you start with the architectures and make, to make sure that you can provide that information that's crucial, crucial and provide the interface, the transport layer. The thing that changed was we would, needed to have network awareness on that transport layer. So that network awareness is really situational awareness. It's understanding the dynamic of what's moving through your networks. So we've got great examples every single day. As a matter of fact, we were talking the other day about the things that were coming in, and while I'd like to do whitelisting and know who all the good guys are that I want to talk to, frankly, right now, we have to allow the conversation. As we were allowing the conversation and, and deciding who was coming in for a reasonable conversation and who was just spear phishing or using our very expensive bandwidth to spam, we found it was just as important to look at what network traffic was going out. Why would we be touching places in foreign countries that have adversary cyber capability? How do you reduce the noise so you can look at just the things that matter? And, and frankly, the noise is in the systems themselves. As you're surfing the web, the computer systems are anticipating what you might want more information about. That's what search engines do. So they are touching places in the network that you have no idea you may want to go. And every one of those shows up on our interfaces as we have situational awareness on the net as a potential adversary interface going out. Why would my computer want to be talking with that country or that site? But if you understand that the network creates that interface in order to ease that kind of search engine or that search activity that people are doing, that becomes part of the noise level that you don't have to pay attention to. And if you bring that noise level down, you can see the spikes that really are indicators that maybe you have a supply chain infection or someone is inside the BIOS. That's the network awareness that we had that changed mission application and allowed us to move to a more proactive defense. And we've put that proactive defense at a number of our partners, one of those being Transcom, where Transportation Command and Air Mobility Command in the Air Force go, so goes the military. And so adversaries would like to see the setup of that transport, as well as get in between the ability to move the tip fed, the time phase deployment of our forces forward, or to resupply them. So we stopped thinking about the network, and in proactive defense, we're talking about defending the mission 
and doing mission assurance. The next element of that internal to our own system is that recon counter recon. And it's just like you'd see in any other military domain. It's recognizing that the adversary is inside your fence line and on your high ground. And you can watch them move in your space and set up your tactics, your techniques, your procedures, and your systems to respond to how they behave on your ground. The next step of that is what you hear a lot about in the press lately, and that's recognizing that the adversary also behaves in his own ground. And so expanding the mission so you're watching the adversary in your space, in your blue order of battle for military terminology, and you're looking at what they're doing in their development, in what kinds of malware they're leveraging, and what kind of tactics they're using to come after you from their from their space, when you merge those two pieces of information together, now you're doing mission assurance in a global environment that is cyber. Next slide. Which means that we have common ground in cyber. And that common ground is what's going to make all the difference. Because whether it's a refinery that's in Texas, or in Saudi Arabia, or a power plant that's in Germany versus one that's up near St. Louis, or railway stations around the globe. They all operate in the same manner in terms of how they automate it to improve production by relying on information technology. That foundation of cyber integrated into the production of how they can do their mission which makes them unbelievably effective and equally dependent and vulnerable. But that means when you shore up the defenses of these things at home, for exactly the same reasons that you have found vulnerabilities in adversaries, then you do both sides of the equation. That's why this is common ground. And the technology we're going to do to establish those defenses and take advantage of cyber relative to our adversaries is all about sharing. Next slide. It is shared risk, which means that you have to make sure you have shared technology to apply to that risk. And if you'll build that for me, you'll see that we have shared technology against that shared risk and shared information to apply the technology in a way that goes back to what I previously discussed, applying the technology in a way that responds to adversary tactics, techniques, procedures, and capability. When you take all of that shared risk and all of that capability of information and technology, that's our responsibility. And that's why we wanted to get together today and have this conversation. And that's why I'd like to make sure that you know that I recognize that this is a shared responsibility. We're going to need new innovation. And even though it's an Air Force that is the greatest Air Force in the world, powered by airmen and fueled by innovation, that means that that innovation comes from all of you, those of you that are in the audience. This is a domain that we didn't create in the military. You created it for the betterment of the global environment. And now we're going to leverage your technologies to make sure that we can assure the mission in everything we do for this nation and the national security. At the same time, we share everything we know about the adversary to help you preserve personal privacy as individuals, corporate advantage and viability, and then importantly, national economic power. All of that to me is that Title II, that, uh, title II part of the uh, nation's law and how we defend that. Happy to answer any questions. And uh, if you're checking out the stuff that I've got on the uh, table here, I'm really glad that I don't have to use the field phone. 
I'm pretty happy that we've got capabilities like we've provided through all of the many uh, folks that we have. Oh, there we go. For those that you haven't seen it, this is one of the technologies that we're looking at to apply to mobile in terms of uh, VeriSign capabilities so that you can do immediate mobile protection. And any minute of any day, I can be checking how the Space Symposium is doing and watching you on video. But it's not about these pieces of equipment. It's about the innovation that lets you move your missions and your capabilities forward. Thanks for your time, and I'm open for any questions if you have them. General Votrino, uh, I believe we're out of time, so I'm sorry. I don't think we're going to be able to field any questions from the group today. But I did want to say thank you so much for your insightful remarks and for joining us today. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.